Amen. Amen. God is good and God is faithful. I just want to honor the Lord. And even in terms of honoring the Lord is to recognize all of our leaders, all of the persons who have served as mentors in our lives, Mrs. Foster Allen, you know, in terms of mentoring so many of us, those persons who are joining us for the first time, and even it might not be today, today, but you are a newcomer. I just want to, at this time, just bless you with the blessing of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it is indeed really, really such an honor to be a part of the body of Christ. Just stop to think for a moment that you did not do anything at all to deserve to be a part of the body of Christ, but that Christ would have chosen you. God would have chosen each of us from before the foundation of this world, this earth, to be a part of the body of Jesus Christ. And even as we are here today, I just want to talk to us a little bit in light of the theme with a focus on a, a certain part of the body, just for us to look at a little part of the body and then see how do we embrace that moving forward as sons of the Lord. So my sister, Sister Elaine, spoke about you know, us just giving ourselves over and she actually pulled from Romans chapter 12. And I actually shared with a group over the weekend past about how God revealed to me the power in Romans chapter 12 when I was struggling to understand the whole matter of change and how do we help people to really change in a deep way for the change to be lasting as opposed to it being temporary. And I remember the Holy Spirit led me to the same scripture verse and helped me to understand that becoming a son of God, when I became a son of God, I literally got a new mind. I was transformed in terms of the new mind, getting the mind of Christ. And therefore, as I walk, I would walk inside of the character of Christ. And so when, it, when we talk about being conformed to the image of Christ, it would be that we have been transformed into sons of God. So we are just like Jesus Christ. So that really was an encouragement as a reminder, as a reflective moment, you know, for me. And to, to stop to think that we are literally now to bring our bodies as living sacrifice. And it is not just as a living sacrifice, but that there is a certain condition. The, the sacrifice is not fit if the sacrifice is not holy. It has to be holy. Holy. So when we stop to think about God doing this new work in our hearts to make us living temples that are holy unto him, we can stop to even think that God, in your faithfulness, you have left me without an excuse. You have removed from this physical body everything that is sinful. There is no desire in my physical body for sin. That even if I dishonor you, I start feeling uncomfortable even in my physical body. I would feel uncomfortable because I got a new body. This is the body that carries the covenant. This body carries the covenant. So when we go back to the old, old Testament and we look at the Ark of the Covenant and we saw that the word of God was inside of the Ark of the Covenant, we even must stop now to think that the covenant, all of the promises of God are literally inside of this vessel. So the presentation of this body unto God as a sacrifice, it has to be holy, holy. But I want us to stop to think right now, 
we have been praying, you know, we have been talking to God. We have pulled on the word even as we would talk to God. We have looked within our own hearts and we, in looking at our hearts, we would even pull on the scripture as a way of supporting, you know, what is inside of our hearts to say, Father God, I'm reaching out to you relative to my life, relative to who we are as members of this community. And God, you see where we have not honored you in all of, in every aspect of our lives. You see that even the things that we would not be bold enough to put on the table right now, you already know those things. So there isn't any secret about who we are. You are so intimately involved with us. You know everything, every strand of hair on our heads. Father God knows about that. And so even as we pour out our hearts before the Lord and we would say to God, this is what we want. Lord, this is what we, we, we see. This is what we are, we are reaching to you for. I want us to stop for a moment, just for a moment to think about how we can cause this very temple not to really be holy constantly. And there is just one little organ one little organ that is the giveaway of what is actually inside of our heart. So even as we would have embraced this whole idea, this challenge of presenting ourselves, there is an organ that we need to just allow God, allow God to use according to his will for the sacrifice to be acceptable unto him. In Proverbs chapter 12, and I think it's verse 18, it talks about the tongue of the wise is health, brings health, health. The words that we speak in, in Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21, it reminds us that there is death and there is life in the power of the tongue there is death so we can choose to walk we can choose to cause death in terms of the things we actually speak and we know that we can defile the temple by the things we actually speak now oftentimes we might stop and pay attention to what has been said whether that is something good or something bad and we can focus a whole lot on what is being said by the individual or the individuals but we never stop to look at what is the content of this message telling me about the condition of the heart what is it saying about the condition of the heart because even as we would have been expressed ourselves unto the Lord. We express out of the contents of our heart. And so even as persons in education, we can be distracted by what is going on around us. And we can even find ourselves uttering some stuff that are contrary to who we are, to the holy creatures that we are to the sacrifice that we are bringing to lay on the altar, we can actually defile the very temple in which God is living, you know? And in defiling the temple, we can literally feel that separation from the Holy Ghost. We can literally feel the separation from the Holy Ghost. But if we don't respond in light of what our prayers are saying, so that we continue to walk in perfection every single hour, we'll just find ourselves walking in tradition. So many times I will hear a person saying, I'm gonna cast down, I'm, I'm binding this to the kingdom and I'm loosing stuff from the kingdom and we will not even begin to see the power of the tongue in terms of the life that it can bring, the health that it can bring, because we have trapped ourselves into a practice of uttering a lot of negatives. 
a lot of negatives. So, you know, you can be working with somebody, you can be working with a student, you might even know be online with students and doing all kinds of things with students, with your colleague and, you know, things are not going the way you think they should be going. They are going down it to you, it seems as though it's the wrong way when actually what God is doing is using this as an opportunity for us to speak life because when things are going wrong we can choose to speak life in the situation we can and speaking the life in the situation we're talking about the souls that are involved in the situation we can choose to speak life or we can choose to speak death and we're, we're, when I speak about, about death, we're talking about, not talking about death to the flesh and death in terms of turning away from the things, but literally destroying lives, destroying lives. So something that we can, we might struggle with is how do I tell somebody something that is not positive about a disposition or stuff? How can I tell them in a way that brings life, that calls for laying aside any weight that I have, that calls for me to just submit to the leadership of the Holy Spirit, that calls for me to just surrender and lay myself on the altar and allow him to speak so that when I actually utter the words in the situation, I'll actually be uttering the life that Jesus would have been uttering in a situation where death needs to be uttered, where death needs to be spoken to in the situation. We speak death to the negative, negative stuff, but we know that it would be that God, that the Holy Spirit, that Jesus himself is literally speaking through us. So how do I speak that life that I actually preserve this body, this temple, in a way that brings a smile on God's face. The other day I was having a reflective moment and I said to the Lord, with all that has been happening, I said, Father God, do you laugh? I was having a reflection, and you know, everything was a bit like stressful with everything. And I'm saying, Father God, do you laugh? And I said, I'm not talking about laughing now when you laugh at people's calamity. I'm, I'm, I'm just wondering if, are you always just serious, serious, serious? And you know, the Lord just immediately took me to the scripture with Jesus. When Jesus was being baptized and he just said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased and a smile came on my face because he was saying wouldn't i smile at a case like that wouldn't i smile when i when when i'm saying i am pleased with what you are doing i'm pleased with the sacrifice i'm pleased with the utterances that actually would warm the heart of the father and so my encouragement to everybody to today, this afternoon, this evening, is just this. The contents of our soul will, will come forth with our utterances. And even when we do not verbalize in an audible way, we have to see that we are still speaking. I am still speaking. When I commune with the Father, I'm still speaking. I think uh, Mrs. French put a post about just always praying. So we don't want to treat prayer in a traditional sense to me. And it's when I clasp my hands and when I come like into a setting, it means I live a life of prayer. So I'm always ready. I'm always there as that sacrifice. Holy, acceptable, pleasing unto the Father. 
So I just want to encourage all of us to just look at our situation. We're in a COVID situation. God is a God of wisdom. God is a God of purpose. And God does not allow his words to go void, to fall on deaf ears. God's word will accomplish what he says it will accomplish. When you have some time, look again at St. John chapter 17 and see what Jesus said about the word of the Father and the fact that he gave the disciples the word and what he has said about us. We have the word. Let us speak the word in grace and in truth and allow God himself literally to be the one that is speaking through us. So Father, we bless you right now and we praise you and we honor you for bringing everything together. Lord, you have strategically positioned everybody who is a part of this group where they actually live. You have strategically positioned them where they actually work. God, the steps of the righteous are ordered by you. And so Father, wherever we go, as living sacrifices. Father, we go knowing that all part is holy before you. That what is in our hearts, Lord, can be seen, can be heard, can be experienced in a way that brings life. We want to bless you for every teacher present. And God, we pray that where there is doubt about their identity as sons of God, that this would be put to rest today. Where there are doubts, Lord, about purpose, that that would be settled, that Jesus, they would see that every discipline can be used in a way, Lord, to prepare lives, to become vessels, to become a sacrifice that is holy unto you. So Lord, even as this morning in the sunrise session, there was a pre the presentation that would challenge even how we see ourselves. We embrace the new creature that we are. And Lord, I pray for everybody that moving forward, each one would recognize that I am the literal physical presentation of Jesus Christ in all situations and it does not mean that i do not rebuke but i rebuke with the grace the mercy the compassion of jesus christ lord we thank you for what you're doing we thank you for how you are pulling out lord god out of us lord the gifts and the talents to be given back to you and so god we just pray now that you touch every life that you touch every leader that you touch every household and god we pray that right now as of today we will begin to cherish our homes as the training space in which you have placed us so that as we move forward god we'll continue to pull on these moments these opportunities with you with our family members even in those spaces to help to bring life in other spaces. We bless you, Father, and we thank you for your faithfulness to us. These are the mercies that we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.